Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the fundamentals behind strategic AI systems in games. Even if you have no idea how to code and have no intention of learning, we'll look at some basic AI frameworks, how they're built, and how they may affect a game's design. We'll also learn how to code them from scratch in the next video, but first, let's get started. So a game's AI is what makes it feel alive. It makes us feel like we're facing coordinated squads and fearsome monsters. In the past, the AI was limited to simple programming, like if player in range, attack. Otherwise, walk left and right. Though plenty of great games only require this simple logic to work. The challenge came from how different enemies attacked and moved with this logic. Did they move towards the player quickly or slowly? Did they fly? Did they go in a straight line or dart around the map? Do they have a ranged attack or melee? Some may follow a hard-coded pattern like hide, hide, hit, or block, hit, block. But this complexity of logic works fine for many action games and platformers all the way back from the 80s through today. A complex AI doesn't matter if the simple one gives you the challenge and fun that you need. If a player can't notice the AI acting more intelligently, and if the AI just creates random noise rather than more life, then it's not worth the effort. So if you're looking to make a Mario platformer or a Zelda kind of adventure, you don't need a complex AI system to make that kind of game. For example, you can use a generic enemy class that has move to and attack methods. It checks if the player is in range. If so, move towards them and attack. If not, then walk back and forth or do nothing. This will probably work fine if you just want to get a game up and working, but we can create a different system that will apply to many different gameplay genres and behaviors no matter what you're making. The most common way is by using finite state machines, which you'll find everywhere from software programming to circuit logic. And people often ask me what topics they can study online, what more they can practice on, so I'll link a great set of notes below. It was actually like my textbook for my algorithms course. So look up the stuff on graph theory, and I know I have an audience with all different skill levels, but I give you the happy cat guarantee you will learn something new from those notes. They're really a great resource on algorithms. Anyway, whether you've studied it or not, a finite state machine is basically a bunch of nodes or states with transitions between them. In our case, our states are what our enemy is doing, their actions like attack, block, or do nothing, stay idle. So let's say we start off idle, we're doing nothing, and then a player comes in range. This triggers the transition from idle to attacking. And now the player is retaliating our advances and we notice that the player's state is attacking. So this is the trigger for us to transition from our attack state to our block state. And so while the player remains attacking, we're going to remain blocking and defending. So we can transition from this block state back to itself while we're remaining blocking. With this type of game, you usually want to be able to access any state from any other state, meaning if we're blocking, we want to be able to go to attacking or do nothing or move to. We want to have those options open, but we have to define a transition and what triggers that transition for every possible combination. So this gets especially messy if we want to add new states or new actions like use potion or cast spell. We have to update the arrows for every possible transition. If you have an enemy AI that just attacks, defends, and does nothing, like our example, a state machine will probably do fine. In fact, think about this. The logic for transitioning between animations is the same for determining actions. So if you have an animation state machine, like in Unity's animator, you can add your collision boxes and damage values and logic to your animated objects and model your simple AI through the animator logic. And actually, viewing the AI in terms of the flow and nature of animations was kind of the philosophy behind the structure of the original Fears AI system, which also innovated around some of the messiness and problems with finite state machines by using a goal-oriented action programming system. And you can read a lot more about the in-depth ins and outs of Fears system in a great GDC paper by Jeff Orkin, which helped me out with this video a lot. I've linked it below, and it's a great read. In any case, the basic idea behind GOP is that we want to add as many actions as we want 
and have the AI build a plan or a sequence of actions to execute in order to reach that goal. So let's give an example. Let's say our goal is to get food. We have the actions gather berries, hunt, get weapon, move to, and idle. These are the actions that the AI has available and its goal is to get the most food in the most efficient way possible. So first we need to assign some preconditions or requirements to these actions. For example, gather berries can be done so long as a berry bush object is in range, but hunt requires the AI to have a weapon and be in range of an animal. So the precondition of gather berries is is in range and hunt is is in range and has weapon. We'll also define the effect of both, which is get food. Both result in food, whether it's berries or meat, but one requires an extra step. So to balance that, let's say hunting gives you more food. So instead of viewing it as a benefit, like maybe hunting gives you 100 food and berries give you 70, we're going to view this as a cost. So gathering berries is slightly more costly than hunting. So let's say the cost of gather berries is 10, hunt is 6, and get weapon is 1. So when we design this graph, we want to find the shortest path between these leaf nodes or starting points and our goal. In this case, we'd prefer to hunt even with the extra precondition because the cost is lower, or you could say the benefit is higher for hunting. So we find this shortest path and push the actions on that path to a stack. We start at the goal and push each node to a stack structure and then have the AI execute them one by one. Now this is a very simple example, but you can add as many actions, preconditions, effects, and costs as you want, and as long as your logic is correct, the principles will remain the same. Note that the move to and idle actions are not in our graph, because if you watch the coding video that's coming soon, you'll find that we handle the is in range precondition a bit differently. If we're not in range, then we continually push move to actions on the stack and continue our plan once we get into the proper range. But what if our plan fails? Let's say our character made a plan to get the weapon and hunt, but someone else took the only available weapon. We had get weapon on top of our stack. We weren't in range, so we do a move to. Still not in range, so we do another move to. Someone takes it. So we check if we're in range, but there's no target to check. So the action returns to our AI planner and says, I failed, success equals false. So we can look at our graph and find the next shortest path, given that this action is unavailable, which is picking berries. Now, if there are no berry bushes anywhere, then our plan has failed and the character remains in the idle state. And so those are most of the edge cases for this very simple scenario. But we can also easily add all sorts of commands to this system. Perhaps we add get wood and get ore as goals and connect those to a larger goal called make money, where we try to efficiently gather and sell these resources. We just build the graph or state machine on the fly and find the best path to make money given whatever our current visible world state shows us and readjust as our environment changes. A more complicated game like Fear may give characters multiple goals with varying priorities and general squad behaviors which would have groups of enemies weighted towards certain actions. And Gope is just one system to think about. You could also structure your AI with behavior trees or use machine learning and all sorts of other techniques to make your system feel more dynamic. But in the end, if your gameplay relies on consistent patterns and timing like Mario, or if your player just won't notice the complexity of your AI system, then it's not worth it. But it's still fun to think about, fun to make, and I think understanding these systems can also help you understand and analyze the games you play. All right, special thanks to Epic Knight 999 and TDC for participating in last month's dev challenge, and special thanks to everyone who kindly answers questions on the subreddit. You can check out the results of that on my second channel, but this month we have a new dev challenge for you all. So basically, you just make a game using any language or tools you want, and I'll feature it on a video. There's no competition. You can spend one day or one month on it. It's just a way to practice, have fun, and 
and put yourself out there. So this month's theme is artificial intelligence, and you can get more information on that in the subreddit linked below. And if you have any questions about my videos or programming or dev related stuff, definitely go over to r slash the happy makers. There are no stupid questions. I guarantee you will get a kind response if you're too intimidated to post somewhere else. But as always, have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.